हेलो एंड वेलकम स्प्रिंग इज हेयर लव इज इन दर एंड विथ इट कम्स वैलेंटाइंस डे द डे ऑफ एक्सप्रेसिंग योर लव विथ लॉट्स एंड लॉट्स ऑफ मनी एंड बिलीव मी इट कॉस्ट्स ए लॉट एंड इट डज नॉट स्टॉप इवेन वेन यू आर मैरिड स्पेशली वेन यू मैरी योर गर्लफ्रेंड अनफॉर्चुनेटली शी इज बिहाइंड मी इज इन शी and so with so much love everywhere it is natural that all the great love stories become alive again we read hear and reminisce on those stories sometimes we even compare which is the greatest love story of all the pinnacle of all love stories and the corporates milk them now today i am going to tell you about a love story from the poetries of ancient india specifically from the bengali people this story is so popular that irrespective of borders every bengali speaking person knows it one variation or another in most of these love stories we see a damsel in distress and a knight in shining armor to rescue her but here the damsel herself is the one who saves the day rescues her love and brings peace between gods and mortals now Let's begin. The story goes like this. Lady Manasa was the patron deity of snakes, poisons, and everything venomous. She was also the goddess of fertility. However, even though she was worshipped by the tribals, gypsies, and also by the housewives, she was denied acceptance as a major god because of her lineage although her father was lord shiva the prime god of destruction she hailed from the naga clan which was why even being an important deity worshiping her was not graciously accepted in the human society at that time upon inquiry she came to know that if a human with extreme influence offers her his devotion she will be worshiped widely and also will be accepted as a major deity in the hindu pantheon so she decided that she would approach the most important human of that time to worship her and that person was chand the merchant he was the leader of the merchant clan and the richest person in the world he with his six sons ruled the money market and was even more influential than any king or saint at that time however chand was an ardent devotee of lord shiva the prime god of destruction and also coincidentally the father of goddess manasa and he outright rejected lady manasa he also mocked her for being a small and weak deity enraged Manasa vowed that she would only take chance offering to become a major god as Manasa was also the goddess of fertility the women of Chand's family pleaded him to offer prayers to the goddess but nothing could sway the merchant king he was not going to worship someone who was worshiped by lower castes and clans finally the goddess threatened to destroy everything Chand had even his six sons but still chand was adamant one by one all six of chand's sons got killed by snake bite all of his merchant ships got capsized by huge sea serpents but still he did not budge his wife his widow daughters in law everyone pleaded him to reconsider his decision to pray to the goddess for his sons lives but he refused to accept his defeat the conflict between god and man did not consider tears of a mother or cries of wives after some time his seventh son was born he named him lakhinder and decided to take utmost care of him he killed every snake around his palace and also the surrounding to protect his son lakhinder grew up to be a handsome young man eventually 
he fell in love with a beautiful girl behula daughter of another rich merchant although they both were from influential merchant houses because of what happened to chand's six sons behula's father was not very fond of this relationship he did not want his daughter to become a widow however behula herself was a devotee of lady manasa and she wholeheartedly believed that her goddess won't harm her family so finally both families agreed to their marriage but chand was wary of manasa's rage so he prepared a strong room made of iron for his son and daughter in law so that no snake could enter and harm lakhinder but lady manasa managed to put a very tiny hole of the width of a hair in that strong room at night when everyone was asleep a venomous snake entered through that tiny hole and bit lakhinder instantly killing him behula's whole world fell apart she was devastated she could not believe that even after all those prayers her love was snatched from her forever that time when a person gets killed by snake bite the tradition was to put his body on a raft and let it flow in anticipation that somehow if the dead could come back alive he could return to his home but this time behula wanted to ride the raft with her husband her dead husband she wanted to go to the goddess and demand justice everyone was shocked her wish was a literal death sentence for her floating in the river with standing scorching heat heavy rain harsh winter that too with a rotting corpse and also without any guarantee of food water or medicine there were bandits hungry animals and every kind of dangers around it was utter madness everyone tried to stop her but her resolve was stronger than anything they had ever faced even chand the merchant king whose iron will defy even the gods could not stop her so she sailed with the corpse of her beloved braving the heat storms torrents rains she sailed on protecting her husband from carrion birds maggots eating whatever the villagers along the river offered her and constantly praying to goddess manasa for lakhinder's life but after a while the body started to rot the stench of the rotting corpse made people avoid her raft everyone just assumed that she had gone mad and beyond saving she went on without food but never stopped praying and rowing the raft she lost count for how long she had been rowing or how far had she traveled finally her raft reached near a lonely cottage a old woman washing clothes near the river found her she took the malnourished girl home and nursed her but behula was relentless as soon as she got her strength back she wanted to go on again to search for the goddess fortunately this old lady was from the naga clan the clan from where goddess manasa hailed moreover she was actually the foster mother of the goddess herself so she took behula to the goddess she also requested goddess manasa to help behula in this situation now the goddess manasa said that she had been following behula's journey from the start and kept protecting the raft from sinking or being damaged she was so impressed with her that she was ready to give not only lakhinder's life but also lives of all his older brothers along with everything chand has lost however she was very angry with chand's arrogance 
and if she gives back everything without anything in return, it would cause her great humiliation and pain. Behula promised to pursue her father-in-law in every way she could, but the goddess was not entirely sure whether Behula's resolve could transform the arrogant and proud merchant king. So they went to the major gods. Story of Behula's love and resolve impressed everyone there. They assured that as Behula's love had moved the goddess, it could also transform the man. Because there is no force greater than love and Behula was the living proof of that. Finally, Behula with all seven sons of Chand returned to the city. Seeing all of them, Chand became so elated that he could no longer say no to his youngest daughter-in-law. He agreed to worship the goddess. However, offering prayers to the goddess was not so easy. Chand worshipped Lord Shiva with his right hand and he could not come to agree to offer prayer to Manasa with the same hand. He decided to worship the goddess with his left hand. If it was some other time, the goddess might be furious with this, but she was so moved by Behula's love, she accepted that. Finally, through Chad, the merchant king, worshipping of goddess Manasa became prevalent in the mortal realm and the goddess attained her seat among the major gods. So that is the story of Mehula and her unrelenting love, courage and resolve. There are several versions of this story with some minor modifications. This story is a part of a great poem named Manasa Mongol. It means the saga or the story of goddess Manasa. This one I heard when I was little and to me it was one of the if not the best love story in the world at that time. There are several movies and songs are written about this specific story and also it is a part of the folklore of Eastern India and also part of Bangladesh. I mean basically the Bengali speaking people. This is a very very popular story. And like all other love stories, this specific story also moved beyond the religions and such. Like it is a, it's about a Hindu goddess and her worship. But also in the Muslim and Christian families in Bengal, this is also a popular one there. So in this specific artwork, if you can see, I have drawn Goddess Manasa above beyond the clouds in the sky with some of her snakes and <coughs> watching over Behula rowing the raft. I have also drawn Lakhinder, I mean the spirit of Lakhinder also helping Behula, uh, protecting him from rain and other problems. The story actually here tries to catch two love stories, two simultaneous love stories. One is obvious between Behula and Lakhinder, the two mortal beings. And the another one is between a god and her devotee, goddess Manasha and Behula. Though, so I tried to capture both love stories in this artwork, like how goddess Manasha is watching over Behula and also Lakhinder I mean his soul is also helping Behula in her pursuit in her quest and on the other side there is Behula uh, she's her resolve her love is the one that empowering both the goddess and her dead husband to help her and also you can take Chan's perspective also. He was a proud and arrogant kind of man who, who also in love with his god, Lord Shiva, and he didn't want to worship any other god or goddesses besides him, even if it means he's, he's losing everything he had 
that's also a kind of devotion a kind of love that is depicted there so yes on the whole manasa mongol is also this kind of a big a grand love story between mortals and immortals gods and man a man and no man and there is another aspect we can also see this in other love stories also that the present or the astral social structure is also somehow depicted in these love stories like here there are divisions of classes clans we can see goddess manasa she is a goddess but she needs some approval from a specific part of human society to attain a major godhood and also she had to face some problems some difficulties from even from mortals although she is a god she is an immortal but she had to face some problems from the human just because there are some class clan dif- differences there but even after everything we can see that the thing that finally gets triumphed is the force of love it mends the gap between the goddess and the merchant king and they came to an understanding and that is why for me at least it is one of the greatest love stories ever told and also we are almost at the end of the artwork and there's some finishing touches and there it is my inspiration for this artwork was the music video behula made by bangla band shunno and ontik mahmud thank you for being with us enjoy the artwork and let's have an awesome valentines day and also remember every love story is a great love story in its own sense oh and also we do art commissions too links in the description thank you see you soon